Wātea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. Kia ora Aotearoa. Tonight we will be discussing part one of a two-part Wātea Fifth Estate special on suicide. This is an issue that affects many New Zealanders and can be very upsetting for many. Please feel free to not watch or listen to the show if you feel it will be triggering for you. Joining us tonight to discuss New Zealand's extraordinarily high suicide rates and why so many Kiwis choose to end their own life. In studio, National Spokesperson for Youthline, Stephen Bell, Religious and History Lecturer from Auckland University, Reverend Dr Harini Carr, and on the phone, mental health campaigner, broadcaster, host of the popular Nutters Club radio show, and keynote speaker at next week's Indigenous Suicide Prevention Conference, Mike King. Thank you for joining us, panel. And remember, viewers, you can send in questions and thoughts for tonight's show off the watianews.com and the dailyblog.nz platforms, or you can email us on watia 5 e at watia 603 amcoz Tonight's guest Twitter commentator is unionist Kate Davis. Follow her tonight using the hashtag Watia Fifth Estate. Let's get on with the show. Over the weekend, GPs have suggested coroners are under-reporting suicide by as much as a factor of three. Our current suicide rate of 570 a year is already one of the worst in the world, and the suggestion that the true cost may be as high as 1,700 deaths a year demands the question, why are New Zealanders killing themselves at the rates they are? What has gone wrong in New Zealand's core values? Stephen, you have been at the coalface at Youthline for two decades. We used to do shows two, two decades ago on radio asking these very, very questions. Could we be underestimating our suicide rate as highly as is being suggested? Very much so. If, if suicide is a legal definition where they're really clear what the intention is, then there is a, a quite a, uh, a lot of other people where it's accidental death. That, that line between risk taking and being at risk. Yep. Uh, but if we just take the numbers out, even if it's just 400, mm. that's too many. Think about the people that each person affects mm -hmm. and think about at least another 10 times that many seriously attempting or thinking about it. Take that out again about think of the people who are feeling disconnected and we're talking about a lot of New Zealanders that this actually impacts and has huge, huge impacts. The hardest work I've ever done is working with families after somebody's killed themselves. The, so the shock wave that a suicide the provokes. The despair yep. and the sense of loss and powerlessness, the unanswered questions, it's just, it's palpable, it's in the air, and of course, you can't change it. It's forever, it's happened. Are things worse in terms of suicide now than when you began? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I like that question because actually it's 30 years that I've been working, yeah. and you could say, have I been successful? Then we're in the situation, the conversations sound like the conversations I had in the 80s. Yeah. At an individual level, yes, I know that there's people that have come back and spoken and said, if you guys weren't there then. Yep. But as far as changing things at a societal level, I think we're in a very similar conversation and the same things. Should we be talking about it? Shouldn't we talk about it? Mm. Actually, this is a, 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 an illness. This is like at a, at a population health so impactful that we need to be harnessing resources. We need to be able to front one another. We need to let people know that it's actually okay to talk about it. Mm. Mike, you have been a tireless advocate of speaking up about suicide and mental depression. Could these figures be real? And why are we killing ourselves at the rate we are? Oh, absolutely, they're real. Um, you know, uh, we all know coroners have... Um, have, have ruled on um, 
ruled on deaths uh, that were obviously suicide, that um, they were all death by misadventure. Yep. Um, or, yeah, all kind of cases, you know, and, and auto suicide is an auto sighted encountered uh, these days as. Uh, Sorry, I'm bad line. Uh, auto suicide is encountered either, so it's um, it's uh, the figures are definitely higher. Uh, what what can we do about it? I, I do believe that we we need to start um, arming people with tools to talk about a problem before it becomes a suicidal thought, which yep. is why I spend a lot of time in schools. Yep. Why why do you th why do you think, Mike? We don't have those skills. Oh, uh, you know, look, it's a, it's a, I'll tell you why. The fact of the matter is the system is, uh, is letting people down. Yep. Currently, the government spends, uh, the Ministry of Health spends $1.4 billion with the Ministry of Social Development, Ministry of Justice, Corrections, and all those other, Ministry of Education. Also, it, it adds up to about two and a half to two and a half billion dollars a year yep. on on mental health uh, and suicide prevention um but 80 percent of that money is spent on the 20 percent of the people who have the problem so right. it's standard stat 20 percent of the problem uh 20 percent of the population will have a major depressive episode associated with some type of um uh, suicidal thought yep. whether it's a fleeting thought i might as well jump off a cliff or it's a reoccurring thought that happens all the time yep. so that's a standard stat we all agree with that right yep but the stat no one talks about is 80 percent of those people will never ask for help right. and the reason they never ask for help is still because of stigma and judgment especially in the school level so the government is spending 2.4 billion dollars on the 20% of the 20% with the problem, but no one's spending any money on the 80% of the population who's often judgmental uh, attitude is having the greatest effect on those with the problem. Yeah. Um, and and the, people, the people are making these judgmental comments, not because they're horrible people, not because they're nasty, they're doing it for two reasons. And the comments I'm talking about is coward, attention seeking, you know, these yep. common yep. things that just come out of people's mouths. The reason people say there's two reasons. One, that's what's always been said. Yep. Everyone says those things. We used to do that with <laughs> by saying things like gay, or the, you know, words like that. Sure. People were saying those words not because they went homophobic, because that was what was always being said. The second reason they say it is because they want to, you know, they make a judgment call. It's because they don't want to be embarrassed or they don't want to say the wrong thing yep. and have that on my conscience. So I feel like I have to shut the conversation down. And in both cases, education at an intermediate level about how to talk about a problem, showing young people how to talk about a problem, a minor problem before it becomes a depressive thought, before it becomes a suicidal thought. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. Positive societal attitudinal change, and it works. So you I, just I, look at the way... You look at the way the gay community are dealing with this now. Yep. I go into schools where kids are outwardly gay. It is okay to be out. Yep. Girls holding hands. Boys uh, boys dressing up uh, uh, in, in what they feel comfortable with. And the only reason they're allowed to do that is because the 80% of the population have turned around and changed their attitude. Positive attitudinal societal change needs to happen. So, Mike, for you, you, you do, do you think... It's 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 an underfunding issue in mental health services, or or, or it's fundamental education issue here. Ah, uh, okay. So um, no, it's uh, it's uh, the system is flawed. So currently we have uh, twenty one DHBs, we have ten major NGOs, ten major PHOs, yep. and about two thousand charities working in this field. But they all work under a competitive tendering system. So everyone's diving in for the same pool of money. Right. They're all undercutting each other. Yep. So once they finally are awarded a contract, they realize that they don't have sufficient funds to pull it off. Right. So now they're looking over the fence at other 
So, so Lifeline's looking over at Youth Lines funding. Yep. You know, everyone else is looking over the fence at everyone else's funding. So when all the contracts are awarded, then the government pulls everyone together and say, now let's everyone work together. I'm not working with you. You're going to steal my idea. So what is happening is all these organizations are having to put their organization's interest first. We're like parents. Who, who are struggling to pay the mortgage. And when, when our children, when the community comes to us and asks for help, instead of us seeing that our, that our children are in pain, what we're doing is we're turning around and telling them all about our problems. Oh, you think you've got right. problems? Well, you think all this fell out of the sky? So we've got to get rid of the competitive tendering process. All these organizations, we all need to sit in a room and, and see where we fit in this big wheel that is the suicide industry. And trust me, when you're spending the sort of money that, that, that the government is spending, then it is an industry. And do I think that there's enough money in there? Absolutely, I think that there's enough money in there. I think... Too much of it has been wasted on everyone else, uh, admin, all of all of these things, and and the government's evaluation processes. Oh my God, <laughs> are ridiculous! Thank you, Mike. So, uh, Doctor Doctor Carr, have we cut ourselves away from the fabrics within society that connects us, like spirituality? Is is this a despair of the soul? Mm. <clears throat> Well, I certainly agree with Mike in terms of, you know, the systemic issues around how we organise ourselves because policy eh, is always going to be huge in terms yeah. of these issues, whatever they are. Uh, they can help solve the immediate challenges. But yes, I think, I, I can speak, say, to Māori society. Our experience, our dislocation, our disconnection from one another, um, essentially, you know, we've had a social collapse over maybe the past 50, 60 years and yep. going back even yep. further. Yep. Um, I'm involved with a program on a research program on Māori fathering, traditional fathering, yep. uh, ideas of masculinity, uh, traditional notions of nurturing um, for Māori men, uh, and a lot of it was around communication. A lot of it was around men being the primary nurturers, sure. especially the boys. Um, you know, as opposed to the staunch, let's not talk, let's not have a solid, grounded relationship. You know, this is. Like I hate to use the C word again, but colonization, yep. right? It's kind of um, distorted, um, disabled in some ways our relationships with one another. Whether the government can fix that, yes, I think there's a role because geez, someone's got to. Yeah. I think um, I think spirituality has a big part to play. Look, talking about sexuality, I mean Christianity has a lot to answer um, for, sure. Um, but I think. Uh, you know, spirituality was part of our core values. It was how we related to one another, our sense of identity. We get rid of it, we replace it with, I don't know, buying a TV that we can talk to. Yeah. That's not going to be a relationship that sustains us, that gets us through those uh, dark moments that can lead to this tragedy yeah. we face. So do you think it's, it, it, it's, it's a mix of toxic masculinity and also maybe some, we, we, we don't feel a connection not only to our wider society, but to anything else. You remove God from people's lives, mm. and what are you living for? Well, you're living for just the now and today. That, that, that can become problematic. Sure, you can't worship consumerism. And, you know, God, rangi nui, papa tunuku, whatever we call it, that sense of our connectedness, right? That was at the basis of Māori spirituality. I'm connected to you, I'm connected to everything. You take that away from people. You make us, you know, reliant on our paycheck. That's crap. Yep, yep. Uh, and of course, we're going to be stuck in our little dark corner and yeah. unable to talk. We lose our ability to communicate. We shut ourselves off. You know, we know thing. that the economic reforms of the 80s and 90s, uh, Dr. Carr, saw suicide rates grow mm. as unemployment and poverty took their toll. Mm. Why are we seeing suicide numbers continue to grow now? Why? why? Well, look, I, as I understand, the Māori suicide rate is 1.8 to 2 times higher than Pākehā. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's some kind of necessarily some kind of cultural weakness on our part. It's the correlation between our socio-economic situation and our suicide rate, I think, is pretty uh, definitive. I think uh, when you're the poorest, you're the most marginalised, you're also the most disconnected. Society doesn't want you. Your community struggles to deal with you. Your whānau can't handle you. You're left on your own. Stephen, let's talk about this toxic masculinity. There's something, isn't there, where young men, older men, when an emotional situation occurs, they find it very difficult to find the resources to deal with that. 
without getting really, really angry and fragile and, and splinter into pieces. Do we need to start talking about how it is to be a man without that, to that, that toxic masculinity? Okay. So I'd answer it this way. If suicide's the ultimate way of leaving the planet, so that's a moving away, what are the things that actually remove people from relationship, from community? Yeah. Now, one bit of research we did where we asked young men, uh, we asked about 400 young men, the question, what do you think the world thinks of young men? Yeah. Now, 99.9% .9 of the answers were negative. Really? This, this is not necessarily what the world thinks of me as a young man, but what I think the world thinks of young men. Right, so right. There's a sense of if, if the environment is that something is wrong with me or I'm dangerous, how does that impact? But then we also went out and asked young people, what, are, what stops you from getting help? Yeah. Okay? Yep. Now, the f top five were nothing to do with services. Right. Okay? The top five was not about whether there was a service or the cost. The top five were those messages that we carry inside ourselves. Right. Those messages that actually what's going on with me is not that important compared to other people yep. or I'm too embarrassed or there's something wrong with me so I'm you know that whole sense of emotional literacy yeah but also our I mean like Mike said our ability to hang out with other people when they're in distress yeah. so whether it's about male uh, uh, our male culture or you know I have a sense that the environment that we grow up in teaches us very well to get what we don't need. Right. And, and if you're moving away from relationship, then if you take that pathway of moving away, alcohol and drugs is yep. there, violence is there, yep. disconnection is there, um, all those things. And then, the, you know, that, that final thing yeah. of I'm going to deal with it. And even if it's, I'm just dealing with it, but of course you don't wake up the yeah, next day. Yeah, yeah. Mike, what is it about modern society that generates the depression and isolation that makes suicide so prevalent in New Zealand, do you think? Well, it's really interesting um, uh, 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 that um, w we pick on this masculinity. The two points that, yeah, come, yeah. that come up in all the talks yeah. that, that I um, do. Uh, and, and the main problem is, you know, we talk about closing the gaps. Um, and when we when we talk about closing the gaps, we mean the gaps between rich and poor. That's not the gap that needs closing. The gap that needs closing is the gap between fathers and families. Yep. Um, that is getting wider and wider and wider. Why? Um, there are, well, there are two types. Of, there are two types of people in the world. There are those who are fighting for social status and those who are fighting for survival. But in either, in both cases, our focus is on money or or or, or food. Yeah. Um, and when you're fully focused um, on those things, especially on the social status side of things, uh, you don't have the thing that your family needs most of all, which is your time. Right. Um, time is the, the, the and, and we talk about this masculine society thing, and and it's interesting that the youth see themselves as a problem. At the last three talks that I've done, I've had young men stand up and and come up and take questions from the audience. Yeah. And one of the questions I always ask them what gives you hope and over 90 percent of these men their answer is love mm. love mm. i want to be loved by my families yeah. i want to i want love from my, from my mm. friends and 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 when i when i when i ask the adult audiences that are there is that the answer you expected? Less than 10% of those wow. audiences expect wow. that word love. They don't think that they don't think kids are mature enough to have this insight that love and connection drives us all. 
So, you know, we, we have this all-knowing thing when we get to, to, to my age, especially yeah. I'm in my 50s, I think I know everything. But ever since I've started speaking in these schools three years ago, I realize I know nothing. We've got to stop looking at young people like they're the problem and look at them for what they are. They are the solution to the problem. They can teach us. That's, that's, that's a remarkable insight, um, uh, Mike. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, Dr. Carr, why are we so fragile and, and, and hurt in New Zealand? I mean, even if, we, e even if there are question marks over uh, the suicide rate being three times higher than, than what's recorded, even if we accept that, um, 570 is some of the worst suicide rates in the developed world. Why is it happening here? Well, you know, I, I struggle to give a definitive answer because it's complicated, a lot of causes, obviously, but... I think uh, part of it is New Zealand, we, we, we surprise ourselves. We tell ourselves we're this wonderful, egalitarian country, yeah, we're the best yeah. rela race relations in the world, we're, we're God's own. We've actually been, we're quite a brutal country. Yeah. You know, we're, we're established on some brutal foundations of taking land and domination. And, you know, we, we've got to be a bit more honest with ourselves. You know, we, our role models are the All Blacks. Now, they're fantastic sports people, great yep. model, but... Yep you know, is that the best? We kind of need to examine ourselves, examine our bullshit. Yeah. Um, you know, masculinity is part of that. Not yeah. just, say, oh, we're a good, keen bloke, mate. It's like, well, look where that's getting us. So right. I think having an honest discussion, I think, um, doesn't have to be pointy-headed, yep. but I think it does have to be inclusive. Yeah. Uh, and listen to these young people, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stephen, what are we doing wrong when it comes to the debate about suicide in this country? I mean, I was just thinking, first of all, like I once, we once supported a young woman to go to, I think it was Brazil, to an international youth uh, leadership yeah, yeah. thing. And, and I, I mean, in some ways it really rewired her DNA when she was over there. But she said she came, she, while I was over there, the, there was a, a high death rate from homicide. Right. But... No one would kill themselves, and they couldn't get over that New Zealand had such this, a high. This, right, right. And there is something in the paradox, you know, like the what you were saying that we have the so-called, you know, this wonderful country, beautiful yep. uh, countryside, sea, you know, we're supposed to be, and yet if you're not feeling that. Yeah. If you're feeling disconnected and it's as though there's something wrong with you, then the isolation that is carried yep. is is immense. You yeah. know, if if you uh, like, we we had a family friend kill herself. Yeah. Very amazing, uh, very able, yeah. talented, yeah. Uh, professional woman, who f who the disconnect from her inner reality and her outer reality eventually was just too big. Right. And, uh, I mean, she couldn't face it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think this, there, I mean, the trajectory between people who feel disconnected and the people who feel connected yep. are so huge. What Mike said about how do you, the getting young people to lead that. I mean, yeah, some of the changes yeah. around social patterns like s reduction in smoking, uh, yep. uh, uh, drinking, some of the best changes have been those that have been led by young people. Right, right. Peer pressure. Yeah, peer yeah. pressure is a powerful thing yeah. in a young person's life. Yeah. Get that peer pressure. You know, you break your leg, you go to a doctor and say, fix it. You break your heart. Well, somehow yeah, I'm supposed yeah, to be tough and yeah. just soldier on, yeah. and it's not working for us. Mike, why, why, um, you're, you're, you're at this amazing conference uh, next week on Indigenous suicide. Tomorrow, actually. Oh, tomorrow. You're, what, what, what is it that you're going to be telling and, 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 and um, uh, talking to those, those, that, that conference? What is it that you're going to be saying? You know, I, I think one of the problems that, that government have 
um, is they're always looking for a solution to the problem without telling the people what the problem is. It's kind of like going to the doctor, telling the doctor what's wrong, and the doctor goes, take these. And you go, what's wrong? Just take these. I know, I know what I'm doing. You've got to tell people what the problem is. Yeah. And I think one of the major things that people have to understand about suicide, I've spoken to over 100,000 um, kids in the, in, and communities in the last uh, three and a half years. Oh, you've, you've done incredible work. Country. You have, you have. But here's the thing. There's only, there's only three reasons people attempt suicide. Yep. Um, and, and this has come back from people who have attempted and families. Reason number one, I'm hurting. I'm hurting so much I need the pain to stop. Yep. Um, um, uh, everyone tells me that time's the great healer, but every day I wake up and it's still there. Older people, usually it's the death of a partner or physical pain. Yep. Uh, younger people, it's a breakup of a relationship, whether it's family or friends or girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, with middle-aged men, usually we've made a bad decision, they have an affair that's gone wrong, or wasted yep. the family money. So I'm hurting, I need it to stop. Two. I'm causing hurt. Um, you know, I, I've become a burden to everybody. Everyone would be better off without me. If I wasn't here, everyone could get on with their lives. So one, I'm hurting. Two, I'm causing hurt. Three, I want to cause hurt. You hurt me, and now I'm going to hurt you in the ultimate way. Yeah. So at the core of all of this is hurt. And if we could help people to understand um, the people, you know, the 80% of the population who never have these thoughts and can't understand, if we can help them to understand that all these people are doing is hurting, and if we carry them for mm. a little while, make them feel better, make them feel connected, make them feel loved, make them feel worthy, just by showing them support, we can change the world. Now, isn't it interesting? Um, if we watch a movie with the underdog in the movie who, who's getting beaten on, he's getting, and we want him to to win, he's the champion. Come mm. on, mate, get up, get up on the floor, do something. We're rooting for them, we're right in behind them. Yet in real life, we look at these people and we find them weak and we walk away from them. Why does that happen? Why in fantasy do we support the underdog, support the lonely guy, want to go over there and hug them, but in real life we don't have the tools to do that? Thank you, Mike. We have to, we have to wrap the show, but before we go, we'll do a quick final word with our panellists. What's the most urgent thing we can do to combat suicide right now, Stephen? Um, let's uh, invest in our young people to actually lead the charge. Actually trust them that they actually have, um, with the support, they can face this stuff. We, we have so much uh, talent ready now Let's invest in them, and through that we can change the world. Dr. Carr? But I agree, and I think strengthening whānau, building whānau resilience to provide that support, that love. Mike? Um, stop asking what everyone else is going to do about the problem. Look in the mirror and ask ourselves, what can I do? Order, Simply by order. changing my attitude, we can change the world. Thank you, panel, and to my final word, what has gone so wrong in New Zealand for so many of our friends, family and whānau to end it all by their own hand? I believe that 30 years of neoliberalism has much to answer for. The myths state that there are no hegemonic power structures within society, that if you succeed, it's because of your hard work, and if you fail, then it's your fault too. In a society that has no religious faith, and all the cultural maturity of a can of Coke, the bonds which keep us attached are frail and disconnected. In our fetishization of individualism, we have lost the central part of the human condition, which is connection. Humans need connection. They need society. They need to bond. We have spent so much time ignoring the importance of solidarity with one another for a competition of selfishness. It is in such a culture that we see suicide numbers in such horrific uh, numbers. If you or someone you know is at risk, please reach out for help. Thank you, panellists. Thank you, Fano, for watching. We'll join you again tomorrow night, 7pm for Waitia for the States, part two of our focus on suicide. Kia ora and good night. Waitia for the State is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union.